And in this video, we're going to look at Cincinnati's 3-3-5 defense, specifically at their run fits. In my previous video, we talked a little bit more about their personnel, how they structure their personnel, what types of athletes they're looking for in each position. But here we're going to look a little bit more at their run fits out of uh, this would be what is considered their dollar package, which is what they typically get in when facing 11 personnel. This is a game previous this year uh, against Memphis. And so first, we'll, again, we'll just a brief look at their personnel, your 3D linemen here, uh, your two inside backers here, and essentially your overhangs, which actually turn into really your weak side safety and what is really the same backer, but he's actually uh, what they call the dollar guy. Your nickels down here tends to be more of a true cornerback type kid, a lot more involved in the coverage. Uh, your cornerbacks are going to be over number one, and then your middle of field safety is going to be here. Uh, again, they, they base mainly out of a cover one. There are some a few match principles thrown in there uh, depending on the route distribution, but for the most part, it's going to turn in and look a lot like cover one. And so here they're going to face a pin and pull scheme. Actually, this is really buck sweep. And sometimes it's really hard to know which scheme it actually is being called just because it's blocked differently. Uh, you know, you, you really don't know until you see another front uh, if they're running pin and pull or if this is just a true buck sweep based on the fact that they're getting a 505 look with a shaded nose. And so for right now, we'll just call it uh, buck sweep because both guards are pulling. So essentially, it's a gap scheme where they're trying to get additional gaps to the play side, which is to the boundary. You're going to get a, uh, an outward track from the running back here. And so now we need to see how Cincinnati is going to fit it up and turn into more of their 3-4 look. So the first thing that I want you to notice is the nose guard, how he does a phenomenal job getting knocked back on the center right here. And what this does is this allows the center to, to get the penetration, but it also cuts off the backside guard from pulling. So now he's eliminated gaps almost as if he's spilling it in a way um, just by the the pushback, the knockback that he gets on the center. And then you'll see he does a phenomenal job of getting on the hip of the ball carrier, pressing him out wide, chasing down the line, and, and helping to make the tackle too. But because he, he cuts off uh, that backside guard, now they're going to double the tackle, or sorry, excuse me, the defensive end to, to the backer. Center will take the, the shaded nose. The other tackle will take the other defensive end. And now you have your two pulling guards. One thing to note, too, is they do, Mark Freeman does like to do field uh, and boundary guys, except for a lot of times when they're facing tempo teams, it really turns into more of a left and right. But he does like uh, field and boundary um, guys to, to start with and then based on the tempo of the game. What, do you, what you'll also notice, too, is uh, with with this 11 personnel look, you're going to get a 40 and a zero backer, uh, meaning uh, he's going to be – the zero backer is going to be head up over the nose for four and a half yards. Uh, they do play a little bit cl closer, tend to be three, three and a half yards, which uh, can hurt you in certain circumstances, but it can also help you. They're big on getting pressure uh, on the guards and playing off of them. Um, but the 40 backer who is essentially over the tackle. Now, again, they're not so structured in their defense that that's where the guy absolutely has to be in a 40, four and a half yards. Heels, you know, at four, four and a half. Um, there, there's a lot of personality to this defense where athletes are allowed to um, some room to move, a little bit of room to prowl based on what they feel like they're getting. Uh, from this formation set or, or what they feel like the offense is trying to do. So, the, but for simplistic terms, this 40 backer is going to be the guy that tries to box everything back inside to what Dave Aranda calls the nation. The zero backer in the sense of the nation is just the rest of your team, right? So you need somebody to, to, to cap it, to, to box it back in, um, to be that lever guy to the outside. And essentially what this turns into is lever spill lever. Um, but you need that zero backer to be the spill guy. And then your leverage guys are also your uh, your outside um, overhang guys as well. But because the, the, the tight end blocks, it allows this backside down safety to now insert, and we get that 3-4 picture right here. And so, again, great pushback on, on the center with the nose. Uh, the backers do a great job of scraping over the top, and you can see here, 
The 40 backer does a good job of trying to get outside that first puller uh, and box everything back inside and does a good job of that. Makes the running back cut back inside to where, you know, essentially the rest of the guys are, are flowing to. And the down safety is going to fit off both the zero backer and the 40 backer. We'll take a look at the butt shot to see a little bit clearer right here. So, again, the shaded nose does a great job of getting penetration. Knock back, cuts off the, uh, the, the backside pulling guard, who now cannot get to that zero backer. Allows the zero backer to fit. Uh, and then the, the pursuit from the, from the nose guard is, is phenomenal, too. So, really good job of fitting this scheme up, uh, which can be, can be tricky a lot of times because there's a lot of extra gaps being added. Um, and defenses have to be really sound against this, and they do a good job. Of it. So in the second clip, we see a 20 personnel look, and they're going to line up to this very similar to how they do against 11 personnel picture and get back to their 3-4 fitting based on their uh, weak safety, who now does not have a number two to his side, so he's free to come down and fit or help with one. Again, they're going to see a cover one picture here uh, from the secondary, and they're going to fit this up. And essentially what they do is – Using that that down safety, um, using that down safety, they're going to allow him to come down and fit to the outside, and now essentially get to a field overlook based on how they slant um, their D line, uh, and now it almost turns into more four three fits. So you get to a seven man box uh, very quickly, uh, and based on how they're going to fit, so it turns into almost like a four three over fit. Um, now, with your traditional Sam, um, your your Will backer, your Mike backer, and this becomes your de facto weak side D end. Um, you're going to see the Will is is going to plug as well based on the flow. The Mike's going to jump back. What what I think is interesting here too is that they're they're mugging the 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 Mike um, and playing back with the Will, but they end up um, jumping back with the the Mike and then sending the Will on. Uh, I can't really tell if it's a quick plug or if he's really just getting flow read and he's just triggering now. I think to, and to what it looks like to me, I think he's reading flow just because uh, he kind of quick jumps, even though he's getting a line movement. Um, what you would think is typically you'd want your line movement to happen and then fit uh, off of this DN, but they kind of jump in the same gap. But for the most part, it still ends up being, um, and what they're going to get is a, a, a down zone from Memphis. And so standard zone blocking. And so you can see this, the nose jumps to uh, essentially a, now a, th a new three tech. The end to the field stays outside, gets to a three, now becomes the, the nose shade, comes down and becomes the outside five. The wheel is going to plug in what really would be the open B gap to his side. The mic jumps back and plays more of a traditional 4-3 mic fit. And now the, the dollar guy becomes essentially the same in, in the 4-3 fit. And so do a good job. This is second and three. Um, so it's short yardage. They, they get a feeling that they're probably going to get some type of, of quick hitting zone play. Um, do a good job with the, the, the zone movement. Again, it turns into the nose making a play. Let's look at the butt shot here. He does a phenomenal job, again, of getting lateral on the line movement and then getting vertical on the penetration. Nothing hurts zone play more than, than penetration. Um, and, you know, they don't pull – the, the down zone to me, I, I call it down zone when you get standard down zone with, with your insert guy or your yo or your H back, whatever you want to call him. Instead of being able to come across and, and zone cut it or something like that, he's going to try and get inside of, of what would essentially be the outside DN here or double it depending on how, um, how the DN plays it. When he jumps outside, it's going to be his. If he were to come down, they double it with the tackle. And so just a good job of getting penetration here. Line movement a lot of times can can really hurt um, zone plays. And this this gets into a little bit about what Belichick talks about. Is slanting into zone uh, can be a great change up because it just sets different it just sets different post, you know, anchor points than than what the defense, you know, excuse me, what the offense originally thought was going to be set. And so it can really quickly throw them off uh, and get a lot of guys to the point of attack. Make a stop here and now turn a second and all right, it's second and 10, middle of the field. Memphis comes out in a two-by-two two set. So they give a 10-personnel look. 
Well, what you'll see that's a little bit different here now is because of the balance set with the two, you know, doubles of both sides with two split uh, receivers, is you're going to get the wheel out of the box a little bit. Now that leaves a 3-1 box here. It's still going to get to a 3-3 fit, um, but just takes, takes a second because you've got your dollar coming from depth. But it does back up that, that down safety a little bit, which gives you a little bit more coverage options to the double side. Um, but you're going to get a 505 front, a standard front from Cincinnati. Memphis is going to run a uh, what's called a gut play. So the essentially you're going to get the play side ta- uh, center and the play side guard are going to double on the nose. You're going to get a fan out from the backside tackle on, on the DN and a fan from the, the play side tackle on the DN. That allows this backside guard to pull play side and insert. Now we have two, you know, two new gaps, which essentially becomes the new B and C gap that we have to account for. And so what you'll notice is that the nose does a great job of pressing through the center and playing to um, playing to to the double team to hold up that new A gap. And now the the Mike, who was essentially over that guard, sees the guard pull. And now knows it can no longer be a double fit. Um, excuse me, it can no longer be single fit gap. As soon as somebody pulls, now you've got to get over the top and get to the new gap. So once that guard pulls through, we've got two new gaps that we have to account for uh, here and and here. And so what you should see is the the mic insert inside out. Uh, he's the spill guy. He's going to spill it out to the wheel. The wheel is going to play into the the um, new uh new c gap essentially from that new pool and so uh the end's going to stay outside and play the new d gap now what uh what really is going to happen here is is this wheel has to fall back inside but really it's fitting off this d end so if the d end is inside the wheel takes outside if the end is outside the d the wheel takes inside and so they do a good job of fitting off each other you see great press from the d end right here pushes that that uh, that tackle back in and squeezes that gap and almost closes it off. And really the, the back now has to bounce. And so the wheel who's now playing it through the, the new C gap now sees the bounce can stay on the hip uh, and get to the TFL. We'll look at it from the butt shot. So standard 50 front right here with a mug mic. He's going to back up on the snap, see the pull. He's now got to get inside of that pool quickly as he can. I'd like to see him come a little bit more aggressive um, instead of uh, he's trying to avoid it with feet, which is fine, and get back in that gap uh, as quickly as he can. The nose has to keep in, in the, inside that A gap here. The uh, the tackle, the backside DN is going to take the, the old, you know, the backside C gap, and then the dollar is going to fold into the, the backside B gap for any type of cutback. Uh, he'll also be able to take any type of quarterback keep uh, if this was more of a traditional downhill type play. And then you'll see the end takes outside. The mic takes the new B gap. The wheel can fold in to get the new C gap. And a good press right there from good extension from the DN presses that gap now inside. And so uh, with that nose pressing through, he's really taking gaps away there. And now you essentially just have two gaps Two hats are in both those gaps. The back has to bounce out, and now the wheel can now stay on the hip, scrape, and make a tackle for a loss. Uh, good fit there from Cincinnati. At right, this next play, Memphis is in 11 personnel, but in a 20 personnel picture. We're going to get GY counter to a 505 uh, alignment from Cincinnati. This is going to fit up a lot like 3 3 stack would. So you're going to get a double from the play side guard and center back to the backside inside backer. Uh, the tackle is going to try and get underneath uh, quick to get to the mic. Uh, backside tackle is going to take the DN. Guard pulls to kick out the DN on the play side. The, the y, y off or the H back, whatever you want to call him, is going to wrap up inside, which should be the strong side linebacker here or the dollar guy for Cincinnati. Um, one thing I notice here is that they, the DN to the field does a phenomenal job of getting hands on that tackle right now. So he's, he's not only getting hands and helping his mic get over the top without getting blocked, but he's squeezing this gap down um, to the point where you can see the guard as he begins to pull. His mindset is, I should be taking this block on about the heel line of the tackle, you know, where the initial um, spot is pre-snap. 
because a lot of times the ends are going to get upfield. But this DN does a great job of squeezing it down so much so that he gets underneath the guard uh, in a position where he surprises the second puller. So now you have a scenario where the DN can now spill what what really is the second puller. The mic um, can spill the the first puller, and now the Sam is your your outside guy, your force guy. Um, and so let's look at it from the butt shot. Again, nice 505. Uh, relatively normal five alignment here with hand to foot. Um, backside's a little bit tighter with hand to crotch, so he's a tight five. Um, but they're able to squeeze those B gaps down uh, dramatically based on how they attack the tackles. Um, and then does a phenomenal job of look at that push he gets there on 56. Uh, is going to make it difficult for that backside wheel to get over the top. However, that the mic is what you want. Um, to get in there now. Now that puts you in a position to spill the first guy or the second puller, whoever shows up uh, first, because the first puller gets over the top. Now the mic steps up, spill, spills the second guy. There comes your uh, Sam to make the tackle. Um, but what, what they do, and I, and I know a lot of teams are, are kind of lever, spill, lever guys. Um, so to me, this is spill guy, this is spill guy, here's your leverage guy. But what a lot of modern defenses do, and a lot of times this can be the athlete himself, just – getting a little bit wide out of position uh, tends to box this in, but they do a good job of, of when they get to their, their blockers uh, to the extra, to, to the extra gaps, they really do a good job of, of um, you know, shocking that polar, um, you know, getting extension and then still being able to play both gaps. The biggest thing for me with, you know, getting head up on uh, a polar isn't now, especially in high school where kids have a, have a, a tougher time getting off blocks, um, is that you're now giving the runner two-way go when you're head up. If you're shaded to either side, you're at least taking away a gap. Um, but here they're able to do a really good job of, um, you know, getting the outside of that, getting to the outside of the other block. And the same is kind of the extra guy who sees, you know, outsides are now taken, so I've got to get back inside. Uh, he's going to fit off, off the end man on the line of scrimmage. So really good job of keeping this – to a two-yard game. The last run fit that we're going to look at in the Memphis game, and then we're going to move on to another game and look at it, some, some different run fits, different formations. Uh, but this was, the, I think, the most unique one that was come, came up in this game, and that is Memphis comes out in a 12-personnel look, a true ace formation, old school, under center. Uh, but what I, what I, I like is that uh, Cincinnati, obviously their spotter was able to see the, the um, personnel change that they brought in two tight ends and they were able to take off their nickel, add uh, the jack, which is essentially a defensive end, and now go to more of their 4-3 look. Um, and you, so you've got your your safeties here, your corners to the outside on number one, uh, your jack DN uh, to the boundary, D-tackle, D-tackle, and your field DN, your Will, your Mike, and your Sam. Uh, and they're able to, um, with the extra big man up front, uh, heavier set, they're able to, to fit the gaps and, and stay single gapped up on this place. You're going to get inside zone. Um, and what essentially, and we're going to look at this from the butt shot, because I think it's a little bit better of a shot to kind of see the gaps. Um, so what what uh, Cincinnati actually does is plays uh, an under front. So they probably call the, the – uh, you know, the strength to the field here or to the, you know, hand of the quarterback, whatever way I would assume that uh, with with the dollar guy, the Sam guy, who's uh, not a dollar in this situation, but a Sam here with a 4-3 package, uh, they're calling the strength to the left. And so you're going to get a shaded one. Uh, what's interesting here is they, they play a six and don't have a, a, a shaded five, even though he kind of just still is responsible for that gap. So it fits up kind of the same, um, but it does – allow the Sam uh, a, a clear read on what is this guy doing because essentially that's the man uh, the other safety has. Uh, the other tight end, man-to-man corners have one, and they have a free safety that's still able to play cover one. And so he's going to fit in the A gap. He's going to fit in the weak B gap. Uh, he's going to play off the tight end. So they're really playing sixes on both tight ends. Uh, he's going to play and fit um, – either inside or outside of the tight end, and the, the down safety is going to play the opposite gap. Same thing here. They're fitting off each other. Um, the mic is going to fit in the strong B gap. The wheel will fold into the strong A gap. And really, it kind of depends on the flow, uh, uh, how it would all fit. 
but they're going to get a uh, strong side inside zone. And so what you'll see here is 19. This Jack does a phenomenal job of playing the block. So first up, you're going to get double on the nose here, double. And it's almost run like duo, and you get a lot of double teams up front. Um, and so it's inside zone right here. Um, like I said, what a lot of people would call duo. And uh, Cincinnati does a great job of fitting this up. Um, what I thought was interesting is just how they played the, the strong side um, fit with a shade and a six. Uh, you know, definitely a big wide gap there. But how they play it, um, they're still going to get uh, fit up on, on all the gaps there. And again, fit up on the weak side too. Knowing that initially that, that, that weak A gap is, is, is kind of where your issue depends on who's going to fit it based on the flow. And then everything kind of fits from there. Um, and your other safety would come down and be the outside guy. Flow was the opposite direction. So it fits up very much like 4-3 under. Um, but they do a good job of you know staying on that shade, taking the A gap, taking the B gap. Uh, Will's looking to fit in that A gap. Mike takes the B gap. This uh, backside D in the jack does a good job of pressing the tight end. They do a really good job of pressing the tight end because I think it lets these guys know right away, okay, they're they're not going out for a pass. And if they are, it's kind of like a jam uh, from, from an outside backer giving safeties a little bit more time. And so you get hands on those guys, and now they know, okay, I can fit right away. The ends will take inside, and you're gapped up across the front. But this – Backside Jack Dean does a phenomenal job of playing that block um, all the way down to the ball carry. And even though it cuts back, um, there's really no gap there. Because um, right now you would either have the, the nose work into that gap or uh, and the wheel to fit there or the wheel to fit there and the nose to work in that gap. So those guys are playing both those gaps. Um, but, you know, once you once you've beaten your guy, and you've gotten heel on, now you're kind of eliminating gaps. So there really is no more, uh, you know, C-gap to that side, uh, which is one thing that you really have to talk to, to kids about, especially in the high school level of if we can get butt to butt and, and beat our shade and win that one-on-one, -on -one, now the gaps really don't matter um, because we have the ability to go multiple directions. And so we can eliminate gaps by, by winning our shade. Um, and so that's exactly what this DN does is he wins his shade, is able to collapse down gaps, and that allows other guys to fit, um, and you're really strong in, in the gap uh, you know, gap defense right here. So really, really good job, uh, great play that I think um, is, is probably the most interesting run play just because Memphis is obviously no more as 11 and 10 personnel, um, but to come out in this uh, ace formation and run kind of a duo play, uh, is interesting to see Cincinnati make the adjustment to their 4-3 and still be able to fit it up and be gap sound uh, and keep it to uh, what looks like a no game. So we'll watch it one more time here. So when the offense gets big, Cincinnati gets big, and they make a play. In this next clip, we're going to look at the uh, American Conference Championship game between Tulsa and Cincinnati. This is the second play of the game. And what I, what I thought was interesting here, and, and you know a lot of times when I do run fit videos, I do good and bad. And so uh, Cincinnati comes out in more of their 4-2 look. Um, and so they have their jack, uh, their jack in to play the weak side D in. Um, and what's interesting is with the trips bunch, so you've got a three over three, and we know that they like to play a lot of man free. So there's your guys there. Um, and what trips can, can really stress you out as a defense too, because you're really trying to tell the offense, are you trying to be plus one in the pass? You're trying to be plus one in the run game. And what, what I kind of like about, uh, uh, sorry, Cincinnati's defense is that it's almost as if they're playing right there on that line of this, this dollar guy is, um, you know, here he's more of a, you know, strong linebacker or, uh, you know, Mac linebacker, whatever you want to call it, in a 4-2 system. But based on his alignment, he's really kind of a half-in, half-out guy. So he's kind of a half guy that he can add into the to the pass coverage. He's in a half guy, um, and he can add into the run. Um, and a lot of people say, well, he's, you know, he's really the true truest of, of conflict players, which, which is true. But I think based on the way that you can manipulate the run fits, I think that you can still 
um, have benefits from there. But what I thought was interesting here is that Memphis, uh, sorry, Tulsa does a really, really good job. They're going to run uh, a zone play to the weak side. And based on how they block it, so you see um, – what, what what essentially Cincinnati's lined up in is an over front to the field and a four two look, um, and they're obviously weak on this uh, on this outside overhang um, to the single receiver side. And normally, like I said, they would want to play that guy down, um, but since they only have uh, trips, they've got to you know bump over their coverage and take him from middle of the field now to being more of a strong side. Uh, down down safety and now he he has to roll back up so it takes that kind of uh third or fourth linebacker depending on the defensive line front um out of the mix over there and so um you're still okay fitting up with a six-man box you can still fit every gap but it doesn't leave a lot of room for air and so you have to think about where can i get my seventh man from um to, to add your plus one um, but memphis does a really good job of this center, if he's able to hook the shade, if the shade can stay in the weak side A gap, you're fit up well. But based on um, the bubble being to the weak side and you being weak on overhang, if this center can hook the nose and push him to the strong side A gap, and then they can play uh, hat for hat on the we on the 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 back side, now they're able to to bump out, um, you know, with um, with the tackle, the fan out on the defensive end, and now you've got the guard, and now you've got to fit two guys on the guard. Well, that's a pretty long fit um, for the Sam to get into that uh, what would now be the the weak A gap, um, and so that is just hard enough now where you see the Will does a good job of staying in his B gap, but. Um, you know, he really doesn't have anybody to spill it to. So he's almost got to kind of play this lever, spill lever. He's got to be the leverage guy to push it back in. So that's why he's trying to stay outside uh, and set the edge. The end's trying to play outside, set the edge. But that allows, there's the path for the Sam right there. However, coming from depth is just enough space where he's got to get over the top uh, of that guard who's able to chip on the three. And they're, they're not even really worried about this backside. They're almost kind of reading him. Um, but I like the play design because, again, if you can hook that nose, now you're you're back to single gapped up, and the guy that's got to get to that gap is coming from depth in the middle of the field. And so that, like I said, it's just long enough where now he's got to get over the backside guard who's coming up and just enough where it's hard to get hands on uh, a really good running back um, and can can make a, a really good play. And obviously this back is, is pretty good when it comes to uh, running through arm tackles. So it's not a scenario that you want to be in. Looking at it from the butt shot again, you could see it, uh, especially from this angle, without having that, that overhang to the weak side, um, they can block out, hook this uh, guy right here, and now you've got a blocker coming. So we've got to have guys for the outside and inside. However, and again, they want to read him, so now they're here, and they can get up to this backer and, and be an even even better scenario. Um, but the, the Sam does do a good job of getting over the top, um, but it's it's just coming from almost enough depth where it makes it hard to, to make the tackle. Um, so good play design. Like I said, this is early on in the game. Um, to- All right, in this clip, this is the first play of the game against Georgia. Uh, what you're going to see here is – Georgia comes out in 12 personnel, and so Cincinnati has to make the adjustment, pull off a DB, add an extra D end, and now they go big. And what, what's interesting to note, too, is really these guys, as far as on the roster, are really all DTs. Um, that's how they're listed. And so they can play, you know, big inside, play their uh, play their more rangy D end to the field or to the strength if they want to. Um, they still have their backers right here. Uh, and you still have your 4 DB. So it really becomes more of that 4-3 look. Uh, and what George is going to do here is motion the back over, so they're going to flip him to the wing side, and then they're just going to run a simple almost down zone, uh, which is essentially inside zone. And we'll look at kind of how Cincinnati fits it up. Uh, we're going to see some line movement here and some movement from from the um, from the linebackers as well. So let's take a look at the butt shot. Initially, they're set up in a in an over front, so you have your standard outside shade of the tackle, sh- shaded nose, backside five. Um, and what 
what I like about this is similar to what we kind of do. We call this an eight alignment for us. We use numbers to dictate our front. And so typically your over front is going to be outside shoulder to guard and a three technique. But I like him. I like him slid over. We call eight front at sides, that outside shade to an inside shade of the tackle. And what that does now is it prevents, especially on, on gap schemes and zone schemes, it really kind of helps these guys with their angles and doesn't allow – um, that guard and tackle to double the three and that tackle to easily come off to the backside inside backer. Uh, he's got to now post it hard. Uh, and sometimes it just provides better angles there. Um, especially when you start moving guys, um, around, which we're going to see here. So initially in kind of that, that over front, Will's tucked in the box. Sam's coming to the box as well. Uh, one of the safeties is down over number two. They got twins to the field here. Um, so run strength is into the boundary, flipping the back, um, possibly just because they want to maybe attack that bubble side um, right here, this this op this B gap bubble. Um, but what I like here is, is you see Cincinnati makes uh, makes a line movement here. So what they're going to do is essentially stack this DN on the guard, cross face with the center. And now what the backers are going to do is almost slide and stack on top of the DTs. Uh, and then fit opposite of them wherever uh, wherever they do end up playing. Um, so they could he could play thick in this gap. He'll come and look at this guard, play him uh, either B to A based on kind of the block that he gets. And now we can X over uh, with the backer. Same thing with the Mike backer can X over as well. Uh, and we could plug up gaps. You see what what ends up happening here is if we look at fits, we've got in into that D gap. C gap, essentially the B gap, A gap can fit off of A and B depending on what this what this DN does. Coming from the outside, here's your extra guy that can help fit on on any bounce back. Um, and we're going to get inside zones, kind of right at the center's butt, and then going to fit off of that. Um, and you see that the, the DN actually ends up coming inside and that uh, Mike linebacker scrapes over the top, exchanges with him. The only thing that I'd like to see that Mike backer do is as soon as he scrapes, get vertical, get downhill, get to heel line, because he does everything right. He just makes a pause right there in the hole. Um, and I know a lot of times, you know, D1 kids are teaching to play, you know, a little bit more laterally than we would necessarily in high school. We want them getting to the heel line, getting through the hole uh, and closing that up. Um, but it just gives that, that D1 back a, enough chance to kind of shake him off. Um, but what we do get is a good fit from the safety over here. We're going to look at his technique in just a second. Um, but watch this backside D in that does a phenomenal job of get hands on the tight end, gets worked down by the wing, um, but goes ahead and slides heel line and, and ends up making the play on the on the backside or his backside, but but on play side uh, of the play. So just a really good effort there. The other thing I, I liked uh, here is the technique by um, by the safety down here. Uh, so you down safeties on two. I liked it. He's going to get hands on two, and as soon as he gets hands, he can peek into the mesh. Uh, and now that's a way that he can add that safety uh, into the run fits, which you don't get a lot of times um, from uh, from Cincinnati. A lot of times when they're playing their dollar package, uh, that nickel guy uh, really is more that true DB corner type kid that's really more covering. So I like seeing them, um, you know, they're playing divider leverage here. Um, but he, you see he gets hands on, and right there he peeks inside to the mesh. Soon as he gets hands on, he knows, and, and really based on that departure too, he knows he's he's not running a vertical route. He's trying to get to him now. He's trying to block me. So go ahead, peek inside, and now I can fit off of and, and be an extra force player there um, to to turn it back inside to to the rest of the guys. So good good job of fitting that up on the first run play. Um, did have a chance to to make a stop. Um, you know the balls right right now. The balls at the eighteen. Um, and that Mike linebacker does have an, a chance to make that tackle for, you know, no yard, one yard loss. Um, but still good pursuit from the backside in. Uh, and they at least keep it to a, to a one and a half, two yard game. And this play, George, it's first and 10. They come out in a 12 personnel wing trip set uh, with uh, under presentation from the quarterback and the running back. And so, because of this set um, with the wing, you know that you need an eight-man box presentation. And so what Cincinnati is able to do is get into that um, with their 4-3 look, bringing in their jack 
um, D in and having him be basically the, the weak side end. And what they essentially get into is an under front here. We'll look at it in just a second. But with the down safety staying single high, they are able to have a, a, an eight-man box uh, and account for all the gaps. So what they're going to get is a zone, you know, basically zone cut, split zone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, even though they're motioning in that Z receiver, um, that corner can still play that outside gap, uh, even though he does bump back a little bit. Uh, and so you're going to see this turns into a pretty big play here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about why that is. And uh, we first want to look at the butt shot and notice the initial formation. So what you have to understand is um, based on pre-snap alignment, uh, we are gapped up uh, just pre-snap looking at it, um, you know, single gapped up, we're good. Um, but what you have to understand is as soon as you get some type of pull, uh, whether that be from a, you know, a two back split zone type look, um, an H back uh, or a guard, something that pulls, Anytime you get a pull, you can't stay in your single gap fits pre-snap. No, you're going to get out gap. So as soon as they bring this guy back across to cut that backside in, they've added an additional gap that we need to account for. So how you do that is instead of fitting your initial gap, now those backers really have to learn how to stack back and kind of rock back, fall back, whatever you want to call it, um, back to their to their um, you know away side D lineman and now fit opposite of them. So if you get some type of fit here, you'll see here, 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 here. He'll end up being over the top. That way, if this does spill, and if for some reason, sometimes this does happen where the, the zone cut will, you know, bounce outside um, the backside, um, you know, slice guy. Uh, and it could be, you could think about it too in terms of zone read. If the quarterback kept it, you still need to take care of that that open gap. Um so as soon as this happens, you need to know, okay, we, we have to kind of rock back, fall back, and now fit the gaps a little bit different. And so the, you can see does a good job here by the Sam, which is why he clears in here. Um, but before even – and really what I like too about this front, um, before we get to, to, the, to the fits now that we've got uh, a puller behind, is that I like that they're playing this outside shade. So it essentially is an under front here. But they're playing that, sorry, that inside shade of the tight end. And what that does is protects this mic. So if we do get some type of zone this way, um, that tight end's not able to just punch down on a five and, and, and then quickly get over the top to that inside backer. He's now got to play thick. Uh, and maybe, you know, you slam the, the tackle out on him and then he tries to get up. But that should give enough time for the mic to get over the top if it is some type of true zone and everybody's zoning that way. But because we do get that pull, you're going to see now in tries to stay outside. Uh, he, you know, the down safety can fit. Um, the corner can fit outside. The Sam now gets back inside what now would be the uh, strong side B. The end play strong side A. So now we need that mic to, to rock back to the, to the weak side A. Um, the weak side B is taken care of by that backside jack. Uh, sorry, the D end. And now the, uh, the jack is going to play that outside C gap and spill. Um, Spill the, the cut back, the slice guy. The problem we have here is you can see that the, the mic um, does not um, stack back on top of the nose and then fit opposite. He gets hung up on that guard, which leaves this alley right here in the A gap. Um, and especially those teams that, you know, most teams are going to obviously carry inside zone. Um, they're going to try to track the center right down his butt. And so they're looking to go A gap to A gap uh, unless, you know, they, they see that we filled it. Um, however we fit, and then they're going to either, you know, take it out the, the front door or bend it back to the backside. Um, but because we don't get that mic into that A gap, we're leaving that alley now, and now we rely on that deep safety that's got to come up and make a play. Um, and now we're talking about a big gain of, you know, 18 or so yards, give or take, um, instead of if we fit it up correctly, um, the ball should not, really the ball should not have anywhere to go outside and in and now the wheel can um, continue to scrape because he doesn't have he's cloudy 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 here's my clear gap um, and so we're gapped up now with the new presentation of the gaps once the ball snapped um, but we don't get that mic so he gets sealed and essentially what we get because he gets sealed is now we get 
we get essentially two two hats in the same gap, uh, which are right there. So the Sam came through that gap, and now the Mike's in that gap, which means we've got an open gap. Um, and what you don't want is that that alley, that crease up the middle, because um, you know positive yards are coming real quick. If we can get the running back lateral, if we can spill it to the outside, if we can make him bounce, if we can make him work, you know, side to side. Um, he's not gaining as many yards as if he's, you know, creasing us right here. Um, but that's really the lesson to learn from this clip is the initial gaps that you're lined up in uh, are great and will work if everybody's true zone, um, you know, something like that. But if you get some type of puller, whoever it is, you now have to reaccount, readjust, and linebackers have to, to, you know, to make the adjustment to rock back, fall back onto the backside, um, you know, towards the backside puller guy uh, on that lineman, D lineman, and then fit opposite of them. Um, if everybody does their job, you're still maintaining, the, you know, a uh, hat in every gap. Um, but if one person gets caught out, you know, a lot of times it's it's kind of like the the football guys, you know, you, one person misses their gap, and that's the gap the ball gets through. And so that's why, you know, I love football. It's such a team game of you know, everybody's got to do their 111 part of the job or the whole thing falls apart. And so that's the lesson from this is, uh, you know, learning how gaps must adjust um, based off the uh, play presentation that you get as opposed to what you're seeing pre-snap.